So what I want to do in this video is create a new user so we're not using user root all the time. And then we can set up our application to be a little bit more like Laravel Forge, which makes dealing with permissions and deploying your application a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually make a new user. And I'm just going to make this new user named Forge just to be consistent with Forge servers so you can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'll do sudo add user Forge. And I'll make a new password for it. And the rest of the stuff you can just kind of enter through. You can skip it. So if I check out the home directory, we have a user forge. If I cat slash Etsy password, we'll see we have a new user in here under here with a user ID forge, group ID forge, a home directory of slash home forge, and a shell of bin bash. So I can log in with the user forge. And when I log in, it starts up a new shell of bash, which is the same thing as what I'm doing here with user root as well. User root is the same thing up here with a shell of bin bash. And the home directory is just slash root. So I can do a few things to set this user up. I'm going to do a user mod. I'm going to append the secondary group root, or I'm sorry, sudo to user forge. And what this is going to do is allow user forge to run sudo commands. So if I change over to user forge, I'm now logged in as forge. I can go to my home directory and I see a directory here. I can do things like sudo service uh, PHP 7 FPM status, and it asks me for my password, but I'm able to do it. I'm able to run sudo commands if I have my password available. So let's get user forge to be the one using our application. I'm going to exit and go back to user root and go to var dub dub dub, and we're going to move my application into user forge's home directory. So we can do the move command, it'll be my app, and I'll put that in the home forge directory. And then, of course, we need to edit the Nginx configuration to reflect that. So I'm going to go to Home, Forge, and My App, and Public. And we're going to print Working Directory just so I can copy and paste this. And then we'll edit Etsy Nginx Sites Available, default. And we're going to change the web root to reflect its new home. So Home, Forge, My App, Public. Perfect. And then we can do sudo service, PHP 7.1 FPM, uh, reload to reload that configuration. And I'm sorry, actually, we need to do Nginx. So we'll do nginx-t, it says it's fine, and sudo service nginx reload to get that configuration change in place. And we'll check out our app now, except we're going to hit the error we saw in the last video where we had some permission issues. Oop, and actually we didn't. And the reason why we don't, I believe, is because um, that move preserved permissions. So let's go over here. Yeah, OK, so I'm still in Home Forge, my app, but everything's owned by root instead of user forge, which is something we'll probably want to change. And also, the bootstrap and storage directories are still owned by user and group dub dub data, which our PHP FPM process is still running as. Right, still running as www data. So this worked. We don't have any permission issues. But if I try to log in as user forge and overwrite code from my app, we're going to have an issue here, right? It's owned by user and group root. So let's do sudo chone r forge. And I could do forge uh, like this with a colon separating. It'll be user colon group, and that would work. But a shortcut for that is just like this, too. You can do a colon and not set the group, and it'll set them both to forge. So we're going to change the ownership recursively. User and group will be forged to the directory of my app. And that's changed. And let's see, we may or may not get an error. I think the cache is all written, too, so it's not a big deal. But if I go into my app, it's all owned by user and group Forge now. But if I remove storage, app, and framework, and let's see, views, and we have that file there, I'm going to delete everything inside of views. I think we'll get an error now. Yeah, so it's trying to write to the view cache, but we have an error where it can't write to it. And then it uh, sends an error back, and it tries to write that error to the log, and then it can't write to the log file. So we just get this stream of errors because um, permission is denied in the files, which is the exact same error we saw in the first video. So. We know PHP FPM is running as user and group www data, so we could once again change these to user and group www data, but we have to do that every time we deploy new code as well, and that becomes a bit of a pain. So instead, what I'm going to do is actually edit PHP FPM, just like we saw in the last video. And you may or may not know where I'm headed with this because I did talk about changing the user that is running PHP in here. So in here, I'm just going to change the user and group of PHP to user and group forge as well, which is very similar to how a forge server is actually set up. So once that change is done, we could reload or restart PHP. I'll just restart it. 
And with CPHP, FPM is now being run as user in group Forge, and we should no longer have a permission issue because PHP can write to the directories you owned by user in group Forge. So now we can actually log in as user Forge, deploy as user Forge, and all that good stuff. The last thing I want to show you, however, is how to get over a common issue, and that is when you are logged in as user Forge, and let's say I go to my home directory and we'll pretend I just deployed some new code. I probably want to do sudo service PHP 7.1 FPM reload, especially if I use opcache because this is the only way to clear opcache, or not the only way, but the best way. And if you do that, it might prompt you for a password. Now this won't prompt me for a password because I put my password in really recently in the video and there's a number of seconds of grace period where you don't have to put it in again when you do sudo. But if you set up a deployment scenario where it logs in and does a git pull or something like that to deploy new code and then tries to reload, you'll get prompted for your password here. And obviously there's no one there in it when you're automating that to put a password in. So we want user forge to be able to run service PHP 7.1 FPM reload after a deployment. So how do we do that? So there's this file in the Etsy directory. I'll grep out and search for it. It's called um, sudoers. And as you might guess, the sudoers file determines who and how and when users can use sudo, the sudo command. So we have sudoers, which is a configuration, and then we have the sudoers, sudoers that D directory, and any file inside of here will also act as configuration for sudoers. So I'm just gonna add a new file in here, and I'll show you the syntax to allow user forge to run this command without needing a password. So you can technically edit these files. I'll show you sudoers, but if you make any syntax error in here this way, just editing it normally, then you will really mess up your server because it'll break. It won't let you use sudo anymore. And if you can't log in as user root, then you don't have a way to run any commands that require sudo anymore. So you can do some real damage there. So instead what you should do is the sudo command, and this will test the file for any syntax errors before it saves it. So it's a much safer way to edit those files. And it's basically the same thing. In my case, it's not using Vim for whatever reason. It's defaulting to Nano, but that's no big deal. And I actually did make a change there by accident. So I'm going to do Control X and say, no, don't save this. And it's not changed. Now, what I want to do is add a file in that sudoers.d directory. So I'm going to do sudo, this sudo. I'm going to do dash F. And I'm going to say, I want this file to go in Etsy, sudoers.d. And I'm just going to name it PHP FBM. And you can name it anything you want. And I'll paste in a line here, and let's see, I adjust this because I'm using a different user here. I'm not using a user named my app. I'm using the user forge that we created. So this is going to say user forge, when logged in from any host, can run sudo without requiring a password for the following commands. And the following command is just that service PHP 7.1 FPM reload command, and specifically reload, right? So restart, stop, and start aren't going to work, only reload. So we have locked that down essentially to just that one user. So I'll do control X to save it. And this time I'm gonna save it. And it's gonna let me because my syntax is correct. And let's see, I'm gonna exit out of the server here. I'm gonna um, log in as user root again, and then and then sudo su over to forge. And let's see, sudo service, PHP, FPM, I'll do status. And this asks me for a password, great. But if I do um, reload, it does not, and it, and it reloads PHP at 7.1 FPM. So now I know user Forge can log in and use PHP 7.1 FPM reload without getting a password prompt when using sudo. And that's really good for automating a deployment of your PHP application to your server where you want to reload PHP FPM. So this is a key point to Laravel Forge. It's a lot of what makes it easier, especially when you hook it up to Envoy to automate deployments. We created the user forge. That user forge is allowed to log in, and it's the user that runs PHP for applications under the forge home directory, and the files are owned by user forge as well. So this all makes logging in easy, deploying new code easy, reloading PHP easy. And basically we have a trade-off here between allowing PHP to run as a user that you can log in with, which you don't typically do, and ease of use of dealing with your code on your production server. It is definitely a trade-off. It is a little bit less secure, but it's not too, too bad, especially if you follow other best practices for logging in, like always using SSH keys and that kind of thing. So that's it for that setup. In the next two videos, I'm just going to quickly cover using MySQL and Redis to finish this off on this LEMP stack.